O Lord, giver of life and source of all that we have, we thank you for the many gifts you have given us, and we invite your presence in our lives at all times. Help us to use your gifts wisely. Teach us to share them generously. Encourage us to faithfully answer your, answer your call to serve one another, and gift us with your grace to know that by answering your call, we will be truly free. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> These proceedings are being recorded for the sole purpose of constituting the accuracy of written minutes. Tapes are reused, eliminating recorded records of these proceedings. Approval of the minutes of the previous meeting held May 9, 2019. So moved. Second. Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Milstein? Yes. Are there any guests concerning county business at this time? Ms. Lucas, Good morning, Commissioners. What I would like to know is, do you have an estimate? of what the cost will be for the new study on Susquehanna Street. No, I do not have that yet. Do you have any idea when the study will take place? They're currently working on the study. The, the issue there is a lot of the uh, work has already been done, so I don't know how we can really break it out. Uh, the As far as square footage, what is required for each of the offices, it's a matter of figuring out now uh, the floor space and how we would approach our offices would go on each of the floors. So we do not have that yet. So there's no no idea of what how much more money will be spent on the restudy of that project. Not this time, no. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other guests concerning Terry? Um, if you are reelected as commissioner, would you be willing to work with a citizens advisory board of any type? Um, uh, work with many advisory boards now yeah, well, different projects and different committees and agencies and uh, the entry coalition things of that nature but as far as uh, what are you getting at exactly please? how we were saying that we want to be involved in decision making with things that would be affecting the taxpayers and the uh, citizens of Carbon County as well as Jim Thorpe I don't see why not I'd like, like to address your concerns beforehand to avoid some of the issues we run into. Absolutely. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other guests? Yeah, hi. Good morning. Chris Lukasevich from Jim Thorpe. I noted that Commissioner Gerhard is not here today. I <coughs> find that interesting. Uh, Commissioner Notstein, could you tell me what was the latest the latest contract with Reading and Northern Railroad? When was that signed? It was referenced last week. It won't expire until the 2030s. Yeah, that was early 2000s. I don't recall okay. the exact year. I can tell you that, Chris. Yeah. It was in December of 2003. Okay, thank you. And who advised the board that a shuttle was needed if we extended the parking lot uh, shuttle for individuals who park there? Who advised the board? Did the Jim Thorpe merchants, did the tourists of Jim Thorpe uh, say there was a need for a shuttle? No, we. Uh, I think we felt that because of the distance and the walking and everything, it might be nice to those that are elderly or mm -hmm. cannot uh, walk that far. Because, okay. you know, uh, I want to point one thing out here, which disturbs me a lot, I, uh, I guess, especially for the people with disabilities, is when I see someone pull into a parking space, two young couples with their children mm -hmm. get out, put their baby carriages there, and uh, put a handicap sticker on the visor. And, you know, to me, that's disturbing. And okay. that, um, all right, well, thank you. Well, there was a two and a half month survey done of all tourists uh, coming into Jim Thorpe to include those who walk from the Jim Thorpe market. And not one individual stated the need for a shuttle from even the Jim Thorpe market. So it seems like a, a want, not actually a need. And I would think, given the fact that our biggest health problem challenge is transportation for those who need services. Maybe we should relook at putting that shuttle resources towards helping those most in need to get the health services that they need. I think if we all look at Sick and Struggling in Cold Country, published by Bing Wong in late January that highlighted a couple of our communities, we would recognize that fact. Let's think about the citizens of Carbon County and not simply the tourists. Let's take care of our people first and foremost. So 
in order to ensure there's no undue influence in Board of Commissioners' decision making, will the receipt by Commissioners Notstein and Gerhardt of $5,000 from the PA Future Fund funneled through the Carbon County GOP on 27, 29 April unduly influence any decision making of this board? That is an election board issue and I don't see why it would. Okay, that's a lot of money. We know 2,500 influences from John Kovach. Uh, have either of you recently visited Glen and Oco Access to Lehigh Gorge State Park and used the latrines or bathrooms there? Not since last year. Not you realize year. it's over a mile to the nearest sewer line there? Yet they don't have porta, -po porta potties, portalets, job johnnies. Yet they have indoor toilets. Yet our county employees are going to have plastic boxes to sit in in mid-August, 90 degrees, 90 percent relative humidity, 15 January, 20 degrees. That's the best we can do for our county employees. Thank you for your time. Any other guest concerns? Yes. I do. Mary Ann Llewellyn. Uh, and I wasn't going to say anything, but I have to say that I take exception to your comment about two young couples with children get out of a car and put a handicap sticker up and then go about their business. Because even though they don't appear handicapped, they may very well be handicapped. I am a 100% disabled vet. Other than my vitiligo that you see my white spots all over my body, I may not appear handicapped, but I am rated 100% disabled by the Department of Veterans Affairs. Good point. And I have a handicap sticker. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, depending on what my disabilities are acting like on any given day. Today I did not use it, but uh, just because somebody doesn't look like they're handicapped doesn't mean that they're not. I agree. I Thank apologize you. for that misstatement, but it just occurred to me at that particular time that here you had two young couples that were out there walking, pushing their kids in the strollers, and didn't appear to have anything. And like I that. understand I that sometimes that I, you know, it is abused. Thank you I for correcting me on that issue. Thank you. Sure. Any other guests? Hearing none, we'll move on. Report of executive session, so. <coughs> Department reports, budget transfers. Motion to approve transfers. Second. Mr. Ogura. Yes. Mr. Nelson. Yes. Supplemental appropriation. So moved. Second. Mr. Ogura. Yes. Mr. Nelson. Yes. Expenditures, approval of payroll check numbers, 71058 through 71094, and direct deposit check numbers 6008569 through 6008980 for the payroll paid to the payroll fund checking account for all county funds totaling $551,832.34. This is the payroll dated May 10th, 2019. Motion to ratify the payment. Second. Mr. O'Gore? Yes. Mr. Nelson? Yes. Approval of check numbers 205591 through 205811 for expenditures for the general fund clearing account showing $513,842.95. Motion to approve payment of bills. <coughs> Second motion. Mr. Gore. Uh, I'm a vote yes, but I want to just say that ordinarily, according to the wonderful State Ethics Commission, uh, I'm allowed to vote on payment of bills, including the ones that I normally abstain from, uh, as a matter of only two commissioners being present at the meeting, so as to not uh, impede the payment of bills for the county. Uh, I do have a potential conflict with the Times News, Blue Ridge Communication, Penn Teledata, and Palmerton Telephone Company, to which I will keep, I will present to the Keeper of Records a memorandum stating my potential conflict of interest as per the advice of the State Ethics. Yes. The treasurer's report. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Gore. Yes. Mr. Nelson. Yes. Personnel report. Motion to approve the personnel report. Second. Mr. Gore. Yes. Mr. Nelson. Yes. 
correspondence was received as listed copies will be made available to the press upon request. Advertising. Authorize the advertisement and the invitation to bid for food service at the Carding County Correctional Facility. Motion to authorize the advertisement. Second. Mr. Report. Once again, I would abstain from this since the bids will be in the time of news, but the State Ethics <coughs> Commission believes that I have the ability to vote in cases where there are only two commissioners present, so my vote is yes. Mr. Nostrum. Yes. Boards and authorities, Agriculture Land Preservation Board, three-year term to expire April 10th, 2022. Local government representative, John Strockets of Lehighton, Pennsylvania. Motion for the reappointment. Second. Mr. Gord. Yes. Mr. Nostrum. Yes. C.C. Keith Lanta, for approval and execution, acceptance of federal fiscal year 2019 certifications and assurances for federal transit administration assistance programs. Motion to approve and execute. Second. Mr. O'Gore? Yes. Mr. Nostrum? Yes. Emergency shelter, for approval and execution, subcontract agreements for the 2018 Emergency Solutions Grant Program Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development, contract number 70338, for the period of November 30th, 2018 through May 30th, 2020, with the following entities. The Carbon County Action Committee for Human Services, $45,000, $30,000 for rapid rehousing, $15,000 for homeless prevention. Family Promise of Carbon County, $34,200. $24,625 for emergency shelter and $9,575 for rapid rehousing. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. O'Gore? Yes. Mr. Nostrum? Yes. Policies and procedures for adoption the revised Carbon County Investment Policy. The original policy was adopted May 21st, 2002 and revised in August 16th, 2007. Yep. Motion to approve. You made it? Okay. okay. I didn't know. I thought it would be some change. I was writing something down. <laughs> I'll make the motion. I'll, well, I'll second the motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mr. O'Gore. I did. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Nolstein. Yes. The storage facility project. For approval and execution, change order number two to the contract with F.J. Lesher, general contractor of Palmerton, Pennsylvania, regarding the storage facility construction project. The change order extends the completion date from April 30th, 2019 to May 31st, 2019 due to delays by PPL to energize the facility. Approval is recommended by County Engineer Carbon Engineering Incorporated. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Gore? Yes. Mr. Nostein? Yes. Electrical for approval and execution. Change order number two to the contract with Larry McLean and Son electrical of Summit Hill, Pennsylvania. Regarding the storage facility construction project, the change order increases the agreement $2,805 for additional wiring costs and relation of and relocation of utility pole guy wire as required by Reading and Northern Railroad and extends the completion date from April 30th, 2019 to May 31st, 2019 Due to delay by PPL to energize the facility, the approval is recommended by the County Engineer Carbon Engineering Incorporated. The new contract total is $69,800. So moved. Second. Mr. O'Gore? Yes. Mr. Nostein? Yes. Solicitor's report? Thank you. Parks for approval and execution. Special activities agreement for the use of Josiah White Park along with request for gazebo submitted for the New England Valley Mennonite Church in Tamaki for street meeting and to a cappella singing and Bible teaching, June 15th, August 3rd, September 28th, 2019. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. O'Gore? Yes. Mr. Nostein? Yes. Nothing further. Any further business? Yeah, I just want to mention on the uh, extensions again on the uh, electrical moving of the lines. It has been very frustrating that trying to get that come through since January. I was with the electrical contractor about two weeks ago, I think it was, when 
we uh, they were supposed to come and change the wiring, but didn't because that day the uh, railroad inspector was not there. So if they were sat for two days waiting, we were given two days, if not this day, I think it was April 9th or whatever. And, you know, so latest we hear is next week. <laughs> Keep our fingers crossed. We do want to get that booth moved. We know it's a pain, royal pain. It's difficult for our uh, people in the booth. And uh, we look forward to moving along with the uh, the kiosks too. We we'll have a meeting coming up to finalize, you know, what we do need and uh, the sites we picked off, out for the kiosks. Will it work? Will it won't work? Etc. And the other issue with the parking lot for safety reasons that uh, and it was requested by the railroad and we agree is that the uh, currently the lighting in the uh, parking lot only goes up to uh, lot B possibly, and we're looking at taking it all the way up the other end because a lot of the passengers are still here or visitors for us are still here later in the evening. So we are looking at improving the lighting in the car in the parking lot as well. And that's all I have. Give me your turn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I have no clue. I'll call the monthly meeting of the retirement board to order and turn the meeting over to Secretary Controller Robert Cranzi. Okay, thank you, Wayne, and good morning. Good morning, morning Bob. Our first item is to approve the minutes of our last meeting held April 18th. So moved. Second. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Cramps? Yes. Mr. O'Gore? Yes. Mr. Nolstein? Yes. I would ask, are there any guests? Concerning Carbon County Retirement Board business. Hearing none, uh, there was no executive session since our last public meeting. Uh, Asked the board to approve the payments for April, and they would be check numbers 40230 to 40259, and direct deposit number 700381. To seven zero zero three four three zero. So moved. Second the motion. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Kramps? Yes. Mr. O'Gorg? Yes. Mr. Nolstein? Yes. Our retirement activity report for April. Uh, April was a pretty active month. We had five members that left county service. Uh, they took a refund of their accumulated deductions. We processed two superannuation retirements and we also process the payment of two death benefits. Our disbursements for April monthly benefits, $373,650.83. Refunds, $34,776.83. Option four benefit, $79,513.05. Death benefits, $98,000. $213.50. So you can see our total disbursement for April were, was $586,154.21. Our portfolio value as of April 30th, $78,501,749. So I can tell you, even though we paid out just about $600,000 for the month of April, we did pick up 1.2 million in market value. So April was uh, a very good month performance wise. I know Treasurer Sheehan asked me if I got any updated numbers since uh, May, and I told him no, I didn't. <laughs> uh, I'll report May next month, but we all know May has been a very difficult month market wise, and uh, we'll just look at that when we get together in June. Uh, other than that, I don't have any correspondence. Uh, Dan, Dan's good. As Wayne mentioned, we don't have anybody in today, so that's all I have. Okay. Any further business for the board? Hearing none, meeting adjourned. Haley, would you like to go first today? Uh, sure, I'll go first. I don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kelly. 
Okay. This is the lightest meeting I've been to in probably three months. <laughs> and, yeah. and it was a double header, too. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Amy. What? Uh, oh, wow. You cannot leave it today. The one with all the questions. Are you okay? I am. <laughs> all right. Bring it out. Thanks for next week. Have a good one. <laughs> what's it, what's up, the bank listing. <laughs> <laughs> so far, getting these. Thank you. <laughs>